This is an overview of copper theft monitoring solutions from DPS Telecom. This red line represents the rising price of copper recently, so you need to take action to protect your copper against thieves. Now let's look at a basic site security application drawing. This yellow box represents a remote site, and you can see that we have a couple different pieces of equipment at that site. The core is a NetGuardian alarm remote. There are a variety of different models and capacities, and this serves as the central link back to your main office. Connected to these NetGuardian are IP cameras connected to its, uh, its LAN switch, as well as motion sensors. The basic concept with the IP camera is a motion sensor will be tripped when it detects motion, a possible intruder, and the camera can then send a certain number of frames that it captured before and after the motion sensor trip. We call it a triggered capture. Those images are then sent back to you for recording and possible dispatch of security or law enforcement personnel. On this side, we have a very similar camera, also plugged into the same NetGuardian, but this is mounted inside an external housing. It's weatherproof, so you can mount them outside. Vandalism is also a problem, so this would help the camera resist vandalism. There's a clear, hardened plastic plate that will protect the lens. The exterior is a, a very hard plastic and metal construction. This also has a weatherproof motion sensor that would trigger the camera to begin capturing images. Obviously you can also view the live images in any, at any time. Also on every door it's a great idea to have some simple door sensors so you can get an, an alarm when a door is opened. All of this information gets piped back across LAN, although we do have some other options in addition to LAN that I'll go over in a minute to a Timon master station for review via a screen display. And I'll, I will show you some of the Timon screens, what that would look like back at your central office in a moment. Now I'll walk you through the product line to show you some of the options that could be filled in this scenario for monitoring a site for copper theft and other security threats. First up was the Sitemon IP camera. Here's a larger image and as I mentioned, there are interior and exterior models. It supports a pre-capture, so when that motion sensor goes off, it'll have some images stored in a buffer. So you can save not only those images, but also a specified number of images after the event. You get a nice capture of the event itself. Uh, we do have a heater that helps keep the camera active uh, to make sure that the sensor operates if it's a, in a below freezing environment. Uh, also, the camera can operate in standalone too. So if you're in a situation where it's a very small site and you just want to have a camera, that camera has a LAN jack so it can communicate directly back to the team on. And so at some sites you might not need a central net guardian. Uh, also on the display here is our, our master station screens, which I'll show you. But here's an example image of a camera pointed at a box, a power box. So here's our master station. Uh, one of the primary views that's easy to use is a map-based screen called Timon GFX. Uh, it's clickable. You can zoom in on these maps. So you get a nice visual picture, especially in a large network. It will give your operators a, an intuitive interface that's easy to understand. Having this kind of geographic map interface is absolutely critical for effectively detecting copper theft and quickly dispatching your security or law enforcement teams. Because it's on a map, you'll be able to very clearly see which sites are still up and then some other sites that have gone dark. In between those sites must be the copper break. That must be where the copper thieves are stealing. Because you get that quick visibility, you're able to send your security or law enforcement teams to the right location. And that's really the key. We can take their pictures via our surveillance cameras when they're at your sites. We can monitor when they use your doors to enter your sites. But between sites in rural areas, one of the best solutions is simply to monitor all the sites, see which ones are dark and which ones are still up. In between that point, that's where your thieves are, and that's where you need to send your forces quickly. Another key component that you should consider from a copper theft perspective is the building access system. That's where logging people coming in and out of the sites and controlling access in and out of sites is important. So the building access system operates with the same backbone. You already have a team on in place for monitoring. You would already have a net guardian in place for monitoring cameras and other alarms and doors sensors. So using that backbone, you simply add entry control units as a small box that goes near a door as well as keypads or proxy readers, or both, depending on what your preference is. 
Uh, so if you have outside contractors, it's sometimes more convenient to give them just a key code or uh, rather than a key. And for your employees, they tend to like proximity cards. In, whether you're using keys or codes, though, you can set timeouts so the code would only last for three days or two hours. Or if you have keys and you don't want your employees coming in at night, which tends to be the time that copper theft happens, you can set the code to only be active between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. or whatever time that employee should be active. If you have a supervisor or manager, someone you trust more, they can have extended hours or maybe even a 24-hour key. So on a per-user basis, you can control access to the site at various times on various days. You can have keys that time out. It gives you a lot more control over who's coming and going into your sites. Now, should all this fail for some reason, and you do have an incident, you still have logs. So you can see which key came in and which key went out. And that's critical in trying to reconstruct events and determine who's responsible for a copper theft. Now we'll look at some of the NetGuardian or uh, and other RTU models. Uh, this is a smaller model we call the NetDog. This would be useful for uh, monitoring just a couple uh, door alarms. It does have temperature sensing, some basic alarm monitoring functionality. In addition to copper theft, it would be convenient with this project if you, you could also tackle temperature monitoring, humidity monitoring, things like that. Uh, the NetDog 82BW is similar, except it has a battery backup for about 10 hours should the power fail, which may happen if, uh, if uh, copper th theft is happening. And it also supports wireless LAN, which is either CDMA or GSM GPRS. Uh, so in the event you don't have LAN at a site, you have that option. Uh, the NetGuardian LT is a very small remote. The 216G3 is, I would call, medium-sized. Uh, then let's go into some of the larger remotes. The NetGuardian is the one I showed in the application drawing. It's uh, our full featured remote. It's got a lot of alarm inputs, a lot of analogs. Uh, the back panel has a 10100 Ethernet switch, so you can plug cameras directly into that device. Uh, there's also a fiber interface. If you, you don't have a LAN at a site, but you do have SFP fiber option, you can jack that directly into the back of the NetGuardian if, for sites where you don't have LAN. And at the same time there, you'll be delivering LAN to the cameras. Uh, the 832A also has a wireless option. You can expand. Uh, it doesn't seem like it would be an issue in this case, but if you had a few sites that were particularly large, you can expand them with by daisy-chaining expansion boxes onto the core unit. Uh, the 216T is, a, is the same medium-sized type net guardian, but it operates over a T1 connection, either frame relay or PPP. And that allows you to communicate back to a site even if you don't have uh, if you don't have LAN there. And this also has a hub on the back of it, so you can deliver LAN to cameras. Uh, the 216F is another fiber remote, remote for if you don't have LAN at a site. Uh, the Voice 16 would dial out over a phone line and send voice alerts. So there's always a voice alert option depending on what your customer wants to see. And we also have some remotes that feature order wire. This, this is uh, an, addi an additional type feature, and it's going to sh allow pe technicians on the site to communicate from site to site. Uh, we can also monitor battery voltages, if that's important. So there's a variety of monitoring we can achieve in addition to the copper theft. And uh, th these are just some ideas for you to go over. Uh, when, we're, when we're putting in a single backbone of a team on master, it, it creates an opportunity to get additional value out of that backbone you already have in place. This has been an overview of some basic copper theft monitoring options from DPS Telecom. If you have any questions, you can certainly contact us. Our phone number is 559-454-1600. That's 559-454-1600.